I had some troubles at the Mexican border. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. UPS is beating my confidence down this week. Not one, not two, but three damaged guitars. In my career of shipping guitars all across the world, I've only ever had, like, a handful of them have issues, so to nearly double that number in one week is just so... So demoralizing, but yeah, something definitely happened to this box. It was a nearly like new box. And for customs to physically open the package to find out that it was damaged, you know this thing had to be like flipping off a conveyor belt or something crazy. So a little bit of backstory. I have a forwarding service where I help people across the world get guitars out of the USA. Sometimes I can help USA buyers get things from overseas, but that's very dependent on each individual situation. But this was getting a guitar to Mexico. It was the guy who did the Nilo caster, we had no problems there. Next up, he wanted to get his brother a gift for his birthday. The really cool snake bite baritone purple James Hetfield signature guitar. We reviewed it, it was all good. We sent it on down. Then he gets a message from customs saying, hey, we're not actually gonna deliver this to you, we're gonna return it to sender. That's even with the Aris packing system on this particular one and a whole bunch of other bubble wrap. Oh my goodness. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> There's a hole in the case. Oh, wow. I wish I had security footage to know what this poor thing went through. To get through that layer of bubble wrap and still nearly go all the way through the case is insane. All right, let's go ahead and see the damage for ourselves. Okay, body looks all right, but yeah, poor LTD. That is not a very clean break. All right, let's go ahead and see what the back looks like. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say fixing this, probably not an option. Like, it can be done. It can be cleaned up, but it's not like a super easy gluable surface, like if it were to break down here. But that's hilarious. Look, the volute did stay intact. It's just the wood around it did not work. However, I don't think fixing it is something we're doing. Insurance will probably end up taking this one. Now look at what happened to the case over here. The felt has been ripped off of this. How does that happen? Is our neck separated at all? Nah, I mean, you could throw a new neck on here. That's probably easy enough. Or if you were to scarf joint another headstock. I'm not an expert luthier. But I'd be interested to hear what your guys' thoughts would be to fix it. Now on my forwarding service, I do have a disclaimer. I am not responsible for the authenticity of the item, its overall condition. This is simply a forwarding service. I'm not offering any checkovers outside of a basic look over. I'll insure it with UPS. And if something happens, we can go through that process because unfortunately things like this do happen. I'm going to find a way to make it better to the best of my abilities in the given situation. So I went ahead and sourced a replacement for this guitar, which is kind Kind of difficult because there's never that many for sale and people are asking various different prices. I ended up finding this one. Now this example almost looks a little bit darker. It doesn't have the weird clown face on it. Although I suppose if you squint enough you can see some sort of a smiley face. But it's a little less obvious than this one in my opinion. But yeah, that is a very different color. That's like a light purple. Or is this is like a darker maroonish purple. How does that happen? It must be the color of the maple veneer underneath it, because this is from within the same run. So I searched around for this, found it. It was quite dirty when I got it, so I cleaned it up for him. And I have decided to remove the tuners on this one. You know, now that I see what happened to that package, it's definitely not the tuner's fault. That was some sort of a bizarre freak accident that caused some insane stuff to happen. But the whole idea of removing the tuners is it keeps the headstock off the ground because those are giant locking tuners. You can see how far they stick. Now, even on the guitar, it's still nowhere near close to touching, but I, I figured that would give us a slightly better chance. So that's tail one. I hope this one arrives safely because our options of replacing it with a clean one are very low. Oh, and in case you were wondering, this new one does not have that gap at the bottom that this case had. Now, I don't think that had anything to do with it breaking. But with any luck, we'll never see another one of these on the channel. And we'll hope insurance takes care of us.
Because about two years ago, a company called UPS Capital reached out to me. They're a different version of insurance, and like you can use it with all the different shipping couriers. I'm not paid to tell you any of this, but if you can reach out to them and they'll give you the same plan that they gave me, there's no additional premium, it's just paying the insurance like you normally do on the package. These guys are great. You send them a couple of photos, proof of the sale, what the replacement cost would be. You know, usually within a week or so, they've got you taken care of. But I think you have to be kind of a small or larger business in order to use that. So if you're just a casual seller, one or two guitars, that's when something like reverb shipping protection kind of comes in handy because they have a very similar process where most times if it's a legitimate claim, they're going to pay out. So I know it stinks paying reverbs 5% and then they're really high insurance rate fees. But after watching this video and you're truly scared of shipping guitars, that is an option for you. For example, if you remember a couple of unboxing episodes ago, I had opened up a Gibson Sonics that had some cracks up the neck. Thankfully, the seller had that reverb shipping protection. So Reverb reached out to me to create a resolution on there. They said I can have a full refund and return it to them and they'll sell it in their restock shop. Or they would give me 50% of the item's value to go get it repaired. Or to keep it as is, they would give me a 50% refund on the value of the item. Now you gotta remember, Sonics aren't really that expensive. So I don't think you're normally gonna get 50% of the value if it's like a $30,000 type of guitar. But that did help protect that seller in that situation. But let me tell you, if you pack them right, you generally have very few issues outside of freak bizarre accidents. I've often wondered, it would be an interesting experiment to go one year without purchasing shipping insurance to see how much you might save versus another year where you do purchase it. For me, it's more so the peace of mind. Sure, it could be 60 bucks to ship something versus 110, but the extra 60 bucks for me is kind of peace of mind. I know the exact cost. If something goes wrong, yeah, it's a bit of a headache, but it usually ends up working out with the UPS capital. Now, again, if you're just that average Joe buying regular UPS or USPS insurance, Sometimes they can give you hassles, so that's why I do kind of suggest going through reverb on situations like that if you are terrified of something going wrong. Because great pack job or not, crazy situations will still break guitars. But the next two tales are Epiphones. So it's been a big pandemic. The Dave Grohl Epiphones. They're like all breaking. I don't know what's going on there. Is it the wood quality? It's a Firebird headstock. Those things always give you troubles. But I had not heard that before I filmed the review. And I had two different new guitar dayers on that. The first one arrived just fine. But the review piece got broken. <laughs> and that thing was packed well. But it got two cracks up the side of the neck. So I have to wait for another one of those to replace that for him. Because he's still very excited for it and I feel bad that it happened but now the other one poor Marty Schwartz ES335 that thing was great had no expectations of that one being busted that was another freak accident but again it's got the two cracks up the side of the neck not quite as bad of a break as the Dave Grohl and unfortunately he did not want a replacement or anything like that just a refund because he liked it because it was the review piece and I can't really re-review another one of those and it be interesting so if anything, my confidence is shaken in some of these Epiphones, but at the same time, you don't know what happens during the shipping process of these things. But man, that was a bad week for me. But we do have a few other little tales here that kind of relates to that ESP LTD. So the one I had found was local pickup only. We had had a deal, then we kind of had to call it off, but then like another week later where we had to arrange it to get to me. But that guitar was only offered in a set with some other stuff stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to unbox these on the show, even though I have to surrender them. So this is like a real pedal board. Got a noise suppressor, some sort of a rev type thing, digital delay. Those are always sweet. Had one of those before, but this one's like a more shiny pearl color. Then a Kurt Hammett wah pedal. That'll be fun. But this is what my current pedal board situation looks like. You know, just one in and out just for a little bit of drive. I've never really been interested in daisy chaining a million things together, but who knows? Maybe it'll be fun to try before I have to send it on. And the other thing my friend gets for securing the whole transaction is check this thing out. It's a Tweed Deluxe Reverb Amp. Now these limited edition Deluxe Reverbs are kind of cool because usually this will just have black Tolex if you're going for that 64 reissue style. That looks something like this. This is one of those hand wired ones. I retired it about two years ago being the active demoing amp on the channel. I've been using the Marshall Blues Breaker for quite some time now, which is a nice amp, but it doesn't really give you that classic Marshall tone. It's a, a little bit different. So I think it's almost time to change things up. So if you want one of these, but you want it to be a little bit different, here's one you could consider. It's the 
tweed covering but I also have a different one that has a really cool paisley design it's a nice dark red color I used that one on the show until I got my hand wired one from Fender but as I was trying to plug this stuff in it, it doesn't look like it was actually ever set up that's kind of a bummer I'll have to figure that out later but we can try this out anyway <laughs> dig out my other deluxe reverb just for a change in tones. I thought that was quite nice. Well, that's all of our unboxing fun for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow for some more fun. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.